Now let's continue with our conversation. Sister Carol, thank you so much for your, for your inspiring message. The, the first thing I'd like to ask you, I know we're going to talk about grace. Mm -hmm. How is it that you're a Catholic nun working at a Protestant church in New York City? Tell us that story a little bit. It was by invitation of Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, who more than 25 years ago invited me to be his adult Bible teacher. And I think one of the gifts that Marble Church offers to the community is the fact that it fully understands we are all Christian. Mm -hmm. And as I often jokingly say to my classes, when we get to heaven, there's not going to be one gate for certain denominations and one gate for others. Absolutely. But there's one very large gate, and we're all going to go in together. Thank and let's practice here on earth. Thank goodness for that. I, I want to pursue a little bit um, your approach to Bible study that zooms in on stories, that somehow really wants to dig into, as I say, these, these characters, these real people who, who wrestled with God in a variety of ways and went through a number of experiences. How do you approach that in your classroom? I think it was an inspiration that came to me a number of years ago that the Bible is about people. Mm -hmm. And people are just like us. Yes. <laughs> they have our hopes, they have our desires, they have our sufferings, they have our challenges. Mm -hmm. And I think if we teach the Bible from the point of view of the people who are on the way to God, mm -hmm. then our own journey can identify with that. Mm -hmm. We're a part of this same movement. Mm -hmm. It's not, I think we can sometimes be so caught up in the fact that it is God's word mm -hmm. that we forget the other part of that. It's God's word to people. To people. Mm -hmm. And the way you brought that to Nicodemus, tracking him through the gospel and seeing how he changed and how he related to Jesus, that really brought, brought it home because you've, you've followed the character arc, as the writer in me would say, <laughs> to see exactly where did he begin and what changed him and where did he end, at least as far as we are concerned. How, how was he transformed by the Lord? He was a wonderful character to do this with because mm -hmm. he was a rare character in the sense that we can find him at three different moments of his journey. So often people come to Jesus and they have an interaction. And as I often said to my high school students, and then what happened next? Mm -hmm. right. Which, by the way, is a wonderful thing to do in your own prayer life. Choose a passage where the person interacts with Jesus mm. and say to yourself, what would happen next? Where would we go from here? Mm -hmm. With the Nicodemus story, John takes us from point to point, mm -hmm. and it's almost visible what happens. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, how do you apply this in your, your spirituality in the workplace outreach? It's, this must be directly related to that. So. Absolutely, because people working are Christian people who have come to work. Mm -hmm. The work is a part of their faith journey. It isn't that they go to church on Sunday and they go to work on Monday, and there was this great divide between them. Mm -hmm. So what we do in those little groups is wrestle with a Bible text, mm -hmm. but we ask ourselves, what does this mean for us today mm -hmm. as working people, in our instance, in New York City? Mm -hmm. How can this help our journey? For example, we had a wonderful time last year wrestling with David as a model CEO. Oh, okay. my goodness. And was he a model CEO? <laughs> my goodness. I mean, plotting to, you know, send one of, one of his underlings into, into warfare in order I, to make it with the wife. I mean, I think know. it's what we see happening with it's true. different social contexts. That's true. But if we can make the Bible people real enough for us, yes. then we can understand both their motivation. Yes. We can understand their failures. Yes. God knows David had them. He did. And we can also understand their successes. Mm -hmm. And this then becomes a part of our journey. Mm -hmm. It's not something that happened a long time ago. Mm -hmm. It's something and, that's happening now. And, and David, sticking with David for half a second, you know, the fact that he had trouble with his kids. I mean, we is can this really, still a human problem? This is still, this is still <laughs> a human problem. It's so so you're in the office place uh, talking with people about these very specific issues and how they relate to their, their life now, not just in the historical context, but no, the direct connection. No, it has to be of, now. Otherwise, right. Bible study is, is a head thing. Intellectual. Intellectual. Right. And it has to be a heart, heart thing. Because to me, the primary reason for studying the Bible is to find out what it means for us. As I said to someone, we have to keep retranslating it 
into our situation, mm -hmm. to our life circumstances, mm -hmm. so that it is the living word. Mm -hmm. There are um, those who believe that as we listen to the gospel uh, being read on a Sunday, we should put ourselves in the midst of it in order to say, okay, I'm either one of the people listening or I can identify with this woman who is trying to get a, her hand on the hem of that gown, you know. Uh, and you're right, it does make it more immediate, more for me as if the Lord is living and working through me, through what happened to him, yes, 2,000 years ago, but right now. Absolutely. Well, I think there's a consistent part of your message, too, is that God's grace is always working mm -hmm. in our lives, mm -hmm. and it's always transforming us in different ways. And mm -hmm. maybe you could share with us some examples of how you've seen grace transform people's lives in well, I big think or small ways. Big or small. I, I think, you know, sometimes we get caught up in the fact, as I mentioned, that Paul had this dazzling moment, and mm -hmm. therefore that's what grace has to yeah. be. Right. And I think sometimes grace is as simple as the unkind word we don't say. Mm. It's the encouragement we offer when we see somebody who is discouraged. Mm -hmm. In some of my you know, workplace groups, it's when we share around a table as to what this means to me here in this particular place, and somebody mm -hmm. says, but I'm in the same circumstance. My boss does that too. Well, this is shared grace, and it's working, transforming us so that we never forget who we are on this journey. I've been thinking about your title, you know, Slow Grace, and I wonder if grace eludes us because we aren't moving slow enough to take notice mm. of its motion. That's an excellent point. Yeah. You know, that we rush so much, that we rush by those moments where God is really trying to go, but, 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 <laughs> Phil, but I Phil. think that's our challenge. You know, yeah. we live in this world of instant mashed potatoes, yes. <laughs> instant messaging, yeah. and if it isn't instant, it isn't good. That's right. And I think it is very hard sometimes to stop from our instant world and say, but God doesn't have a stopwatch. No. God is not timing my spiritual journey, mm -hmm. it's a, but God's grace is there. Mm -hmm. It's this constant process. It's, constant. it's this growth that kind of evolves and shows us grace really in the process of our That's lives. That's right. Mm -hmm. And we don't always sense this because I prayed to God and I didn't get an answer in the next 10 seconds, mm -hmm. therefore. And I, I really think, you know, the pace of our life and the pace of God's grace mm -hmm are almost in opposition unless we oh. take the time to stop and breathe mm -hmm. and invite God into a slower spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. But we have to be willing to surrender um, our, our immediacy, our I want it now, and our agenda and say, God, you take the reins. That's right. Yeah, our prayers sometimes are like dictations to God. That's true. That's Rather true. than stopping and saying, and God, what would you have me do? Mm -hmm which is what Nicodemus had to wrestle with. What did God want him to do? Mm -hmm. Did God want him to give up that power mm -hmm. and become a disciple of a scorned mm -hmm. carpenter from Galilee? Mm -hmm. The wrestling must have been enormous. Mm -hmm. John Oney hints at it. Well, I'm thinking that uh, you're giving us the strength to uh, slow down and take some risks and pick up the grace, sister. Thank you so much for Thank your you, message sister. and for talking with us about grace.